Good day, everyone. Welcome to one of our bite-sized videos of which the purpose is to bring you, the integrator, up to speed with some of the basic concepts surrounding the Flowgear integration experience, as well as take a brief dive into one of our popular use cases. We're going to start by exploring the screen in front of you, the Flowgear console, which is the very first thing you'll be greeted with after logging into Flowgear. The Flowgear console provides access to all the components relevant to your integrations. From here, you can navigate to spaces that facilitate the setup for different parts of the integration. The three primary spaces that I'd like to briefly touch on are the workflows, connections, and drop points. Workflows can be found by navigating to the workflow section over here. And workflows provide a canvas from which you can drag and drop connectors and tooling provided by the Flowgear platform and construct your integration according to your business rules. We will go more in depth around workflows once we start to explore the specific use case. Connections, which we can navigate to by clicking over here, are spaces with which you can provide credentials that allow you to authenticate and connect to the systems which you would like to integrate with. We can go ahead and click on the new button over here, and we can go ahead and select a particular connector to work with. And connect, choosing any one of the connectors we can see here within the connector section, such as ConnectWise Manage, you'll see there's a space in which you can plug in credentials that are relevant to that specific platform. You then have the option of providing credentials for different profiles, such as test and production, and you will be able to run your workflow or integration within that profile, which will then target that specific environment that you've set up. If you set up your credentials correctly, you can click on the play button over here, which if successful, will give you a green banner telling you that the test succeeded. Finally, we have the drop point section. The idea behind the drop points is that it is our solution to hybrid on-prem and cloud integrations. You can install the drop point agent onto your on-prem servers, which will allow us then to talk to those servers within the scope of what you allow us to do using the whitelisting features. This means that we can talk to your file systems, we can talk to your AD, or we can move data between CRMs and ERPs that are not exposed to the internet with the drop point. These three spaces are the most important aspects related to the integrations themselves within Flowgear. For a deeper dive into the elements that make up the Flowgear console, please see our bite-sized video focusing on navigating the Flowgear console. Next, we're going to take a deeper dive into workflows and nodes. To do this, we're going to navigate to the workflow section, which we have done by clicking on this workflow over here. And from there, we're going to open up a new workflow by clicking on the new button right over here, at which point we're given the option to name the workflow, which we can name it appropriately, and click on the OK button over here, at which point you are then greeted with the Flowgear Design Canvas, the purpose of which is to provide you with the space to drag and drop Flowgear tooling in a specific sequence and order to string it together and then form the basis of an integration from end to end. Now to start dropping the tooling onto the canvas, we're going to click this plus icon over here, which is going to open up a list of our nodes. All of these little blocks are what we consider nodes. And simply put, a node is a function or set of functions that have been encapsulated in a certain way that the most complex aspects of it have been obscured from you and only the parts that you have to interact with are exposed. Now within our nodes, we have distinct categories. And the first category you can see here are the connectors. The connectors are responsible for talking to the systems with which you would like to integrate. And so all of the complexity around authenticating and talking to these platforms is hidden behind the node. And again, only the most relevant aspects of the node are exposed to you. Triggers are nodes that allow you to determine how a workflow should kick off. So it gives you architectural freedom around when a workflow should run and how it should run. In other words, if you would like a workflow to run twice daily or every 15 minutes, or perhaps on receiving a particular email, triggers will facilitate that process. Processes are the nodes that are responsible for actually supplementing, transforming, and enriching the data sets that you need to work with. So when you receive data from system A and needs to be transformed to a different structure so that system B can ingest it, the processes are there to facilitate that functionality as well as implement further business rules that you may have necessary for your integration. And then finally, evaluators are the nodes that are going to have a look at the result of a transaction and allow you to kick off additional supporting logic within that workflow. In other words, should a transaction fail, does somebody need to be emailed? Does someone have to be informed in some way? Does a report have to be built? So, so on and so forth. These four categories encapsulate all the tools that Flowgear provides the integrator, allowing you to build both simple and complex integrations within the scope of a simplified experience. 
For this demo, we're going to be looking at the movement of purchase orders from an Excel document into CISPRO. By the end of the demo, you should be comfortable with our branded CISPRO connector, as well as one of the ways we can handle the ingestion of Excel files on the platform. To kick off the demo, the first thing we're going to want to do is open up a brand new workflow. To do this, we will have had to navigate to the workflow section over here, where we are then able to click on the new button on top here to open up a brand new workflow and design canvas. And then the first thing we'll have to do at that point is name the workflow appropriately. And then once we click on the OK, we can get started. The first thing we're going to want to do is drag the appropriate connectors onto the canvas, which represent the systems we want to talk to. One of those will be our Excel connector, which is going to ingest an Excel file and spit out st a structure of data that we can actually work with. And the other one will then be our CISPRO connector, which is responsible for consuming the data from Excel and turning it into a purchase order. Now, some of the steps you want to get started first is to actually set up the connections into these environments. And so the first thing we're going to want to do is open up the CISPRO side of things and pick the connection that we've set up beforehand for this environment. Now that we've opened up the connection, you can see that there are spaces in which we can provide the credentials that are unique to the CISPRO uh, authentication process. And so if I navigate to the test profile where I have created these credentials, you can see all of the relevant uh, information that I've plugged in here to be used. And once all that has been plugged in, we can go ahead and click on the play button over there. There we can see the test succeeded pop up and now we're ready to move back. So heading back to the canvas, we know that the environment for which the CISPRO has been set up for is correct. And now the question is, how do we get the data into the Excel node, which is going to process that for us? Well, to do that, we're going to use another one of our connectors called the file node. The file node allows you to talk to file systems on-prem and FTP, FTPS, and practically any kind of file sharing option. And so again, in a similar fashion, to set this one up, we're going to go ahead and select the, the, uh, the connection for this particular file node which we can do for the CISPRO VM. And we can explore that one as well, just to show you what that looks like. And here you can see in the test profile, all that I've actually provided for this one is the Flowgear Lab CISPRO drop point. So uh, within the scope of the drop point, we, it has been installed on the Flowgear Lab itself. And having selected that drop point, we now have access to the file system within the actual uh, CISPRO environment. And so that that's set up, we can go ahead and head back to the canvas and we can start to see that the idea here is we're going to get information in the form of a file from the CISPRO VM. We're going to pass it along to the Excel node for processing and then pass it along to CISPRO. Now, we need to add an extra step within the scope, which is to actually map that particular structure out from point to point. And so I'm going to go ahead and open up the nodes and select the quick map over here and plug that in between the rest of those nodes over there. And we can start to move these things together. Now we need sample data to actually work with a quick map. So the first step we're going to perform is head back to the CISPRO side of things. And having set up a successful connection, we have the ability to choose a sample through the options window over there, choose sample. And now we can see a list of all of the functions that we can potentially perform against the CISPRO environment in the form of business objects. The business object we're particularly looking for is the port toy, which is the purchase order post. And so we're going to go ahead, click on that. And that's going to give us an idea of the kind of fields that we're expected to pass along to this process over here. So that takes care of the samples on the one side of things. But now we need to understand what kind of data we're getting through from the Excel side of things. So I'm going to want to run a portion of this integration in isolation. And to do that, I'm going to unhook the section that I've already hooked up, hook this up here, and let's start by getting the file node working. We have a successful connection into the, the file system. We just need to give it the type of data it's expected to return, which is a particular file, which we can then take the path for that file, plug it in here. Here you can see what that file is. And we're going to want it to return it in the form of binary. Pass that content, content along in the Excel document side itself. And we can actually run this portion in isolation by clicking the test. Or we can run the node first to see if we even get a file back. So we can go ahead and do that. And within the activity log over here, the workflow activity log, you can see that we did get a file back with the size of 17 kilobytes. So we're certainly getting something back. So we can run this portion in isolation by clicking over here, saying run from this node. And now you can see both the file and Excel node has ran. And the output of the Excel node is an XML data set that looks like this. 
And so we can see some of the information that we are expected to be able to receive from the system. And so the last step now is to take the Excel document, table XML, hook that up to the quick map and hook up the result to the data XML. We can open that up and we'll actually see a comparison of those two structures over here. Now, what I would like to do first before we start mapping is to show you the actual Excel document itself. And so if we go ahead and bring that across to the screen, we can see that there are two sections to this Excel document. One is a header tab, which has some of the basic information for the header of the purchase order. And the second tab is a bunch of lines. And so this is what's essentially going to feed the information through to our, our integration. And now we can get rid of that over there and start to look at this process again. To kick off the mapping, the first thing we're going to, going to want to do is to map the actual structure of the payload from point to point. So for every data set, we want a post-purchase post orders data set. And for every line, which we can click on over here, we're going to essentially send through a stock line. Now that that's been taken care of, we can start mapping the header in from point to point, such as the supplier and the particular type of order. And then we can keep mapping these from point to point, such as the PO number, which we can search for if we can't find it easily on our side. And then very simply, some of the address details we're going to pass along. And now you can see on the right-hand side, there's a preview of the data that we're currently busy mapping, which is telling us that the data structure we're expecting to provide is busy shaping up in the way that we can see over here. We're actually going to remap that to postal code. So now that we have some, the header mapped, we have to start moving on to the lines themselves. We're going to scroll down to the line section and just some of the basic information we have to provide over here would be stuff such as a stock code, the actual quantity of what it is that you would like to create a purchase order for. You can provide a description and some other fields, depending on the validation on your SysPro setup. I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead and finish this mapping and we can take a look at what that looks like afterwards. Now that we've finished the mapping up, there are a couple of things I wanna to touch on within the scope of this mapping, such as some of the transformations we've done, where in the case of the order date, we've taken today's date and performed a simple transformation to make it shape into a specific way that SysPro is expecting us. And so we've done this twice. And in the one case, we added two days to the due date. That could come from your source document, or we could hard code it here as we have. Um, and at the bottom, we have some hard coded values, such as the order quantity, uh, sorry, such as the order unit of measurement, which is just each, and the price unit of measurement, which is just each. And within the stock description, we've trimmed the field by 50 characters so that any stock description that is over length doesn't trip up the actual purchase order ingestion. As you can see, not only have we changed the structure of the data from A to B and carried across the information in structure A, we've also added functionality for this tool that allows you to supplement and enrich the data even further by trimming fields and adding custom dates formats as you've seen. So this tool is not only there to transform the data structure, it's there to help you create an accurate document that is representative of the, the destination system and what it requires. So now that we're happy with this particular structure that we have, have over here, we're going to go ahead and close this up. And so within scope of what we've done so far, we've gotten the file, we've passed it through to the Excel node, we've mapped the document, and now the final step is to now run the integration from point to point. So we're going to go ahead and click on the test button over here, which is going to run the integration in the test profile using the test credentials. And at the bottom, again, we can see the workflow activity logs doing their thing and showing us exactly what has happened uh, for each node. And so the first thing we can see here is that the file node has returned a file of 17 kilobytes again. We can see that the result from the Excel is this table XML that we saw previously. We can then see that the result from the quick map is this purchase order document over here with a couple of purchase order lines. And then finally, we pass it along into SysPro and SysPro responds with this payload saying that items processed one, items invalid zero, um, and here is the purchase order number for which it has been assigned for this transaction. So we can now navigate to the 
Cispro instance and have a look and see if we can find that purchase order. Now that we've navigated to the Cispro side of things, we can see that we have an instance of Cispro open and we're going to do a purchase order query and look for purchase order number 19. So we can go ahead and change this value to 19 and we can go ahead and search for that. And here you can see the purchase order that we have just created with the four purchase order lines that were visible in the Excel document. And now that we have proof of that having worked, we can head back to the canvas. This effort represents getting an information out of an Excel file and throwing it into Cispro in the form of purchase orders. This particular integration is not production ready. There would be aspects of error handling and some other workflow intelligence or business rules that you would like to add. But Flowgear provides for those with all of the tooling on the system, which can also be found within the list of nodes over here. Now that we've shown you how to build a workflow, if at any point you have to go back and see what happened, you can navigate to the workflow logs over here. For more detailed information on the topics we explore today, or if you would like to explore more complex aspects of the platform, including architecture and best practices, please join us for our technical certification course hosted on udb.com. Also, go ahead and check out some of our other bite-sized videos for more common use cases and platform features. Also, please go ahead and visit our website where you can register for a free trial and complimentary proof of concept. Have a look at our unique pricing model or explore our list of over 200 pre-built connectors. Thank you very much for joining me for this short demo. Have a lovely day further.